I'm James Melendez, James the Wine Guy, here to talk about Pinot Grigio, Pinot Gris, and Grau Bergunda. Now, for me, it's a wonderful lyrical grape, and it's a mutation of Pinot Noir, as is Pinot Blanc, a mutation of Pinot Gris. And um, that's just the regulatory genes just turn off, and it has no color, hence it becomes a white wine. But now we're going to focus in on Pinot Grigio, Pinot Gris, Grau Bergunda. Calling out these names because they're really probably the three most called out names for this varietal. It's absolutely beautiful. So I have some uh, examples here. I have some Italian examples from Zutiro Alto Adige. I have a U.S. version, North American version from Lodi. This is a wine grape that is growing through many places in the world today. So let's talk about the French origin. The uh, French name, the Pinot Gris, is a pine cone shape of the actual fruit cluster. Gris meaning the color gray. It's actually not gray. It's just um, it's not quite deep red like a Pinot Noir. Uh, or, you know, just very, very uh, deep coloration, purple, uh, almost lavender coloration. It's somewhere in between that. Now, you're going to find this wine grape being grown in many regions in the world, including Argentina, Australia, even in England, Austria, Canada, Chile, France, Germany, Hungary, U.S., Italy, Moldova, New Zealand, Romania, South Africa, Slovenia, Switzerland, and the Ukraine. Now, these examples here are just beautiful wines, and, and of course, um, you know, there, there's so many different variations that come in in terms of what is the land giving to these particular varietals, or this particular varietal, in terms of its land um, characterization. Best way of saying that. Uh, for me, this is a really versatile wine grape that is um, just beautiful in terms of what it does for food. And, um, the, you know, when you think of uh, Pinot Gris as it's one of its call-out names, um, while it's, it's actually uh, greater plantings are in Germany and in, um, elsewhere in the world compared to, say, France. So that's why I tend to call it different names. And uh, in the U.S., uh, say for a while in Oregon, you could only call it Pinot Grigio or Pinot. You could only call it Pinot Gris, basically. You could not call it uh, Pinot Grigio. Now, I understand that uh, particular regulation has been lifted. So if a producer in Oregon wants to call their wine a uh, Pinot, uh, Pinot Grigio, they can. Uh, probably they're not going to call it uh, Grau Burgunda, but uh, definitely it has that flexibility. Uh, these are beautiful wines in terms of their acid structures. Um, and sometimes I think they're not given the credence of saying that these are really gorgeous, serious wines in terms of not just being characterized for a um, picnic basket, hot weather, but year round. So go, you know, think about this in terms of food. Think about this in terms of a uh, great variation of foods. This can be served with, with uh, fish, shellfish. Uh, enjoying this with uh, the pizzas, uh, burgers even. Uh, so it goes from, you know, from, from casual to very um, uh, stylized um, ethnic foods, uh, Italian foods, obviously. Um, Mediterranean foods go really well with this wine. Uh, for me, it's just you get so many different characterizations in terms of its flavor components, its scent components. It depends where it's being grown, its producer, its artistic, uh, you know, the winemaker, what they're doing to the wine, and that is the end result. So that's why I don't give some general characterizations because each wine is different. So I've already reviewed this wine. I'm going to review these two wines in their separate videos because, as I always say, they deserve their own wine review. So for more wine reviews, please go to jamesthewineguy.com. Please subscribe to my videos on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Vimeo, Google+, Pinterest. Salut.